Hi guys and welcome to uh, this uh, quick review for the uh, for exam three. I know I'm looking at the original file as it's still being probably edited with uh, with uh, LaTeX, but uh, I know I gave you also a printed version of this review. So if there are any changes, I'll let you guys know. So the point being in here, I have uh, uh, we have all of the problems basically from the review. So I'm going to go through each and every one of them. And uh, for right now, I'm going to focus only on the first two problems that basically deal with the collisions. I know we're going to have a full review next uh, week. So this is just a basically a like a touch basis on these problems. So you guys can have some pointers so that it helps you prepare for them for the exam. So I'm going to pull my one note. OK, and uh, I think I need the problem also to look at it at the same time. So how am I going to do that? So I'm going to push this on one side of the screen. Okay. Okay, I think that's good enough for right now. Okay, so basically uh, we have this problem in here, in here, and it says you have two particles with masses M and they are 3 M. So the first particle is mass M and the second particle, I don't know what this is, and the second particle is 3 M. And they are uh, moving on the x-axis with the same initial velocity vi, okay, M uh, are moving toward each other in the x direction. So somehow we have to have, this is a two-dimensional collision, by the way, okay? So one of them is the x-axis and one of them is the y-axis, and the x-axis is the direction I chose where the two particles are moving. And the initial velocity for both of them is vi, and one of them, the m is uh, moving to the left, I have it backward. Okay, I have M moving to the right. Doesn't matter. So let's change this one, make it M, and make this one 3M. So the M is moving to the left, and the 3M is moving to the right. Okay, both of them have the same initial velocity, VI. And uh, basically, uh, I'm looking at the other screen. Sorry about that. Okay, anyway, so. Uh, uh, and uh, the 3M is moving to the right, they undergo an elastic collision. So what that elastic collision means that the kinetic energy before must be equal to the kinetic energy after the collision. That's what that means. The momentum is conserved. So the initial momentum, remember the momentum is a vector, must be equal to the momentum after. And this is a two-dimensional collision. And uh, they undergo an elastic collision. So this is only due to the fact because it's elastic. Okay. And in here, due to the fact that we don't have any external forces, this is a collision. Any time you have a collision, the momentum is conserved. Okay. Now, having said that, uh, let's see here what he's saying in here. Find the final speed of the particles, knowing that the uh, undergo collision and the M is moving in the negative Y direction after the collision. So somehow, this mass here, the M, after the collision is here. So we want to know where the 3M went, okay? We are going to assume that somehow the 3M made it in here, okay? With the direction in such a way it has a component in the X direction. What is this? Sorry, okay, so that's following the mouse, I guess. Okay, anyway, so we have the 3M has two components. So let's let's put the, the, the things in perspective. So the velocity of the first particle is ne negative vi in the x direction. This is vi in the positive direction. So the momentum for the first particle, the, the initial momentum, I'm going to call it p, is equal to the m moving in the x direction with a negative vi and zero components in the x direction. And the 3m is moving in the positive direction vi and no uh, y component for the velocity. Okay, so both of them are moving with the same speed toward each other, but one of them has more mass, three times the mass of the other, and basically they are going to collide. Okay, so we set up the initial momentum. But the final momentum we know is going to involve the mass M that has zero components in the X direction, and it has a negative V1 prime. Okay, oops, I'm going to call it that way. And uh, that's the first mass, okay. 
because I have a, one that has mass M and the other one has mass 2, so I'm going to address the first one with the index 1 and the other one with the index 3. And the 3M, I don't know what its directions are, so I'm going to call it V2 prime and V2 uh, uh, I should call this one V2 X direction and V2 Y direction prime. Okay, just the primes usually are uh, they're not going to be needed honestly anyhow. Okay, I'm going to remove them immediately after we set up the problem. Anyway, uh, the other thing we know is that the kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy before is simply one half the mass of the first particle times this velocity squared the speed squared so we don't care about the sign uh, plus the uh, one half times 3m the other one also times vi squared so if you add up 3m plus m that's 4m divided by 2 that's 2m vi squared so that's basically the initial kinetic energy the final kinetic energy according to the whole expression is going to be equal to one half of m times v1 prime and i'm going to remove the prime because there is no need for it but this index is one and two and uh, that should that should take care of that thing so knowing that this is the final velocity the final kinetic energy plus 3m over 2 times the square of that velocity which is in the x direction squared plus the y direction squared okay so that's basically the idea behind the whole problem. So how many equations do we have? We know VI. VI is given. Okay. We don't know what V1 prime is. We don't know what V2 prime X is. And we don't know what V2 prime Y is. So we have one equation that equates the initial to the final kinetic energy. And this will give me 1 half of M times V1 prime squared plus 3M over 2 times V2 prime squared plus V2 uh, Y. This is X prime squared. Okay, so this is equation 1. Uh, granted, in here, the M's will cancel from both sides. So the mass doesn't come in. I mean, the ratio of the mass is only M is important. Okay, and you multiply by a factor of 2 and you get this expression to look nicer. But it's one equation. What is this in here? I'm sorry. <laughs> I've never seen this before. I think that I did an update to my OneNote and it brought this thing in here. Okay, let me remove this one too, out of the way. Okay, move it to the other screen. Anyway, so uh, this is one equation with three unknowns. Remember, we don't know the value. Yes, we know the direction of the, this velocity, but we don't know its value and we don't know this value and we don't know the value. So we have one equation, three unknowns. We can solve this. We need two more equations. The second equations are involving the momentum. Remember, the initial momentum must be equal to the final momentum. And here, the initial momentum involve only the uh, uh, this vector p must be equal to this vector t. That means the x components of this vector must be equal to the x components of that vector. And the x component in here is m times times negative vi plus 3m times positive vi. So this initial momentum is actually equal to p is equal to m as a common factor and i have uh, negative vi plus three vi so that's two vi's and zero okay so this is the initial momentum the final momentum again i'm going to write it in terms of the momenta i mean in terms of the as a vector so i'm adopting for some of you what is known as a matrix representation of the vector it's kind of a little bit condensed otherwise you're going to involve in the i hat and the j hat if you are not too comfortable with this representation anyway so i have zero plus this number so uh, the i'm going to call the m out too so i have zero plus three times this components in the x direction so three times v2 x prime and then i have uh, negative v1 prime plus three times this vector both of them have the m out so negative v1 prime plus v2 x prime so v2 x uh, three of them v2 x prime 
So this is my second vector. Okay, so these two vectors, they must be equal to one each other only and only if uh, their components are equal to one another. So here comes the second and the third equation. We have, first of all, the m's cancel because the two vectors are equal, so the m's cancel. So at the end, we're going to end up with 2vi equals to 3v2x prime. So we solved one equation already. This is equation 2. It's already a solution for one of the velocities. So we know from the get-go what this velocity component of the second particle is, just two-thirds of vi, whatever the vi is. Okay. So this is already a solution to that equation. It's just the other one that is going to be a little bit more uh, involved. So the x component, again, is 0. Actually, it's actually a solution, too. So 0 must be equal to, uh, no, no, never mind. OK, so it's equal to negative v1 prime plus 3v2x, v2y, I'm sorry. This is the y component of the second particle. So this is equation three, okay? So this is already soft. So we know the x components of the second particle, how fast it's moving. And I know I drew this second particle going in here, but I gave it some generic, generic components in here. So that means that any value is going to be fine, okay? So if it turns out to be negative, so be it. So in other words, it could be bouncing back, okay? Or it could be going this way. So we don't know. But from clearly, from this equation, v2x prime is positive. So it could only be in the second or the third quadrant. I mean, the first or the second quadrant, only above the x-axis because, sorry, never mind. Either the first or the fourth quadrant. That's when the components of this v velocity is positive. So it's either here or here, OK? Technically, it should not really be going in here. Otherwise, no, there's an imbalanced momentum. So this is a correct place. So it's going to be most likely in the first quadrant. Okay, so v2 prime also should be positive. That's what I'm trying to say. So we solve this to v2 prime in terms of v1 prime, and we have v2x prime. We go back to equation one and replace the value of v2x prime using this expression with vi. We're replacing the v2 prime with the vi prime, collect this v1 prime with the term that is going to appear in here in v1 prime, and solve for v1 prime. Once we find v1 prime, we'll come back to equation three and solve to v2y prime. I hope that's clear. I mean, I described the steps, so hopefully you guys can finish this problem, okay? And then at the end, it's asking you what's the angle with which this is going to go, the angle theta. It's simply equal to the arc tangent of vy prime over to dx prime. So theta is the arc tangent of the y component over the x component of this merging particle. So what is the angle theta at which particle 3m is scattered? You can find it from there. So I hope that this is a good start for you guys to finish for this problem. OK. How are we doing on time? We still have so 13 minutes, so let's finish this. So part two, okay, problem two, I should say. Now it says a, a half kilogram sphere moving with a velocity, and it's a vector velocity, so it's in the i hat, j hat, k hat, so I'm going to flip it into a matrix representation. A meter per second strike, second particle with a, this velocity, with an initial uh, velocity is this much, so this is the mass, one and a half kilogram. The velocity of the 0.5 kilogram, so this is a three-dimensional problem, collision in 3D, okay? After the collision is this. So we're going to find the final velocity of the 1.55 particle. So here is what I'm going to say. The initial momentum is equal to the final momentum, and it's a vector. So what we have is I'm going to assume that the 1.5 kilogram has a velocity x, y, and z, okay? I know, usually x and y and z are for the position coordinates, but short of writing vx, vy, vz, you just write x, y, and z. They are just unknowns. They're going to be in meter per second. They're not going to be in meters. And by the way, you could drop this primes from the pre previous problem. They are not needed, okay? So this is the 1.5 kilogram. The other particle we know after the collision, so this is after, after the collision, that particle, uh, the half kilogram, is going with a negative 1, 3, 
and negative 8. So this is the 0.5 kilogram. Before the collision, what did we have? Okay, we have this particle actually was at negative 1, uh, 2, and negative 3. I'm reading this, this value in here, okay, because that's a 1.5 kilogram. So that's this vector. And the other one, the velocity is 2, negative 3, and 1. Again, it's just this vector. So we're going to equate the initial and the final momentum. Remember, I'm going to multiply this one by 1.5. I'm going to multiply this one by 0.5 and add them together. Multiply this one also by 1.5 and this one by 0.5 and add them together and say that the initial momentum, this is P prime, must be equal to the oops, must be equal to the final. So this is initial and this is final. Okay, so let's put this equation in here. First of all, one and a half times x, y, and z, my, uh, plus 0.5 times negative 1, 3, and negative 8, must be equal to 1.5 times negative 1, 2, negative 3, plus 0.5 times 2, negative 3, and 1. I have three equations with three unknowns, so we should be able to solve them for x and y. So the first equation is all of the x components are equal, so that means 1.5 times x plus 0.5 times negative 1 uh, equals to 1.5 times negative 1 again uh, plus 0.5 times 2. Okay, I'm just looking at the x components only. So this means that 1.5x, this one is negative 0.5. When I take it to the other side, it's going to be 0.5. This is negative 1.5. And this is 1, okay? Because, again, remember, 0.5 times 2 is 1. So, again, 0.5 minus 1.5, that's negative 1 plus 1, that's 0. So, x is 0, okay? So, the x components of this particle after the collision is 0. Let's do the same thing for the y component. Again, 1.5. I'm going to skip a step now. So, I'm going to say 1.5y plus 0.5 times 3, that's 1.5, by the way, half of a 3 is 1.5, is equal to 1.5 times 2, that's 3, okay, 1.5 times 2, minus, uh, again, 1.5 times, uh, minus a half of a 3, which is 1.5, okay, I'm sorry, 1.5, not 1.5, okay, 1.5, when I take it to the other side, is going to be negative 1.5, minus 1.5, that's 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, so that means y is also 0, okay? Same thing in here, all I have to do is 1.5 times 3, which is some 4.5, okay? Half times negative 8, that's negative, I'm sorry, z, what am I talking about in here? This is wrong. 1.5 times z, that's z, not 3. So that's 1.5 times z. I can't even re read my own writing. Sorry about that. <laughs> negative 4, because half of 8 is negative 4. 1.5 times negative 3, that is negative 4.5. And then plus a half, okay? Plus 0.5, okay? Again, negative 4.5, plus 0.5, that's negative 4. And you have negative 4 on the other side, it's going to be positive 4. So z is equal to 0. So this particle is going to stop at its track. So this particle, one and a half, is going to stop. It's not going to go anywhere, okay? Because all of its components of the velocity x and y and z, they're all zero, okay? So that's basically what this is saying. Find the final velocity, so we found it. And then is the collision elastic or inelastic or what it is? So we're going to cal calculate the kinetic energy before, Keb4. Remember, uh, the mass is one half times one half. One half mass times uh, velocity squared, and the velocity squared for the first particle is this two squared plus negative three squared, which is nine. So four plus three that's uh, uh, four plus nine that's thirteen plus one that's fourteen. So basically, you take two squared plus negative three squared plus one squared, and this is fourteen. 
divided by four, of course, because one half and one half is four, one fourth. Okay, and the mass, uh, the uh, the velocity of the other one too. Remember, the mass is one and a half, so it's one point five plus one half, first of all, uh, of one point five times again the two one squared plus two squared plus minus uh, three squared. That's actually going to be fourteen also. So 14 is a common factor. I have one half times one half, and I have one half times. So it's going to be basically the whole kinetic energy initially is going to be one half times a three. I mean times two times two, because you have one half plus half is two, times two times 14. That's a common factor. I took it out already. So the answer is 14 joules. Okay. Double check it to make sure I'm, I didn't make a mistake in here. What time? How? Are, oh man, 20 minutes already. Okay, anyway, so uh, now assume the velocity is, so part of B. So now we have the kinetic energy for the for the initial kinetic energy. We really have to find the kinetic energy after, kinetic energy after, and that is going to be equal to zero, first of all, for the particle that is not moving. So it's one half times 1.5 times zero squared, because you add all of the velocities and you square them, and it's zero, zero squared plus zero squared plus zero squared is zero squared. So the whole thing is zero plus one half times 0.5, times its velocity, its kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 9, that's 10, plus 64, that is 64, and 10, that's 65. It's clear that the kinetic energy after is not the same as the kinetic energy before, so the collision is inelastic. Okay? Let's keep. Oh man, there's too much noise. They're going to be cutting the gas. So I'm going to speed up this thing. Now we're going to do the same thing in here. So it's the same similar steps, except the 0.55 particle is in here. So you're going to do the same calculation again, and you're going to check the final and the kinetic energy. If they are the same, it's elastic collision. If they are not the same, it's an elastic collision. As a matter of fact, if they have the same velocity, they're stuck together. So that would be a perfectly inelastic collision. If they have different velocities, and different kinetic energy before and after, then it's an inelastic collision. But if they have the same kinetic energy before and the same kinetic energy after, that means you have elastic collisions. So I promised to do two problems. I think we're good. So I'm going to stop this one, and I'm going to report uh, later on. Thank you.